What is going on everyone? James Hancock here. I'm back to review the new Edgar Wright film, Baby Driver. It's been a couple of years since we've had our last Edgar Wright experience. The World's End came out in 2013, and obviously in the time between then and now, he was attached to direct the Marvel film Ant-Man, but due to creative differences, parted ways with Marvel on that particular film. So we had a big gap. But he is back with a vengeance with one of the strongest films of his career. Now, I should say in advance, I will be getting into some spoiler territory later in the video. But initially, at least, I'll speak in broad general terms in case you're on the fence about whether or not you want to see it and you just want to hear some general impressions. I am a pretty hardcore fan of Edgar Wright. I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic, but I really, really love his stuff. I love everything he's ever done to varying degrees. I think World's End's probably at the bottom, then probably... Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim, Spaced, Shaun of the Dead. And I would place this probably a notch or two below Shaun of the Dead or Spaced, but definitely above Hot Fuzz and World's End. So, yeah, I am a, a very, very satisfied fan. It is not at all like most contemporary action films. I feel like a lot of contemporary action films have a similar form of swagger where it's a lot of wealth porn, you know, fancy cars, people with giant steroid-enhanced muscles, bad dialogue, beautiful skinny girls, and relatively interchangeable plots. But Baby Driver feels like a 2017 spiritual successor to a t kind of action film we used to see in the 70s where just because you were making an action film didn't mean that you weren't going to invest an enormous amount of energy into brilliant music and great writing and world-class acting. Basically, a movie directed with a singular, distinctive, original voice. Ed Wright has put a stamp on this. It feels and looks like an Edgar Wright movie, but goddamn, it's almost as if Edgar Wright is saying he's no longer the talented young upstart who's making these quirky original movies. He's essentially signaling, I'm ready to do some really badass balls-to-the-wall flicks, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he were to be courted to do a James Bond film or something of, of that nature. Man, It seems like he's ready for a giant film of that scale. So beyond that, I really can't review it much more without getting into spoiler territory. So this will be my final warning, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'll just say, Baby Driver lives up to the hype. Fantastic flick. I highly urge people to go see it. But I should warn you in advance, the first, or at least in my case, the first 20 minutes or so, I was kind of disappointed. I was not invested. I was not into it. I was in a wait and see mode. But when the movie really gets underway, good God, it does so in such a huge way that by you know the act two or midway point, I was totally invested. And by act three, I was holding onto my armrests, just riveted by this spectacle I was seeing on the screen. So that's the end of my spoiler free review. Let's get into some specifics. So, without question, hands down, this is Edgar Wright's best film when it comes to working with actors. The cast he has assembled is absolutely ferocious, and they do such brilliant work in characters that, on the whole, are unlike anything we've seen him play before. Kevin Spacey plays essentially the mastermind of this gang of criminals, but in no way, shape, or form does his character follow the typical formulaic traditional arc of a character of his nature. In a lot of ways, it's really, really inspiring and almost like a surrogate father figure for the main character, Baby. Lily James, this was my first exposure to her, but she is just an absolute angel, just sweet as can be, absolutely adorable. Without her, the heart and soul of the movie just wouldn't be there because the romance is what keeps this movie alive and really injects it with so many, like, it injects it with these stakes that ordinarily aren't there in an Edgar Wright movie. Edgar Wright's movies tend to be really, really funny, but I very rarely am emotionally invested where I'm worried about the welfare of the characters, and Lily James just injects this humanity that makes the movie totally unlike anything we've seen from Edgar Wright to date. John Hamm as the villain Buddy, good God. I mean, he's a great Donald Draper in Mad Men, but I feel like he could go the rest of his career playing dark, savage, love-smitten outlaws, and I would be totally happy because while the character of Baby and Deborah might have the main romance of the story, John Hamm's character Buddy is in love with a character by the name of Darling, and I think her name is pronounced Aisa Gonzalez. In any case, they're 
like the classic outlaw Bonnie and Clyde lovers on the run and they're so badass and so cool to watch in action but both of them together I mean you can't even imagine them apart but the way they look the way they dress the way they walk into a room guns blazing total badasses Jamie Foxx as Bats is very aptly named because he is batshit insane. I mean, Jimmy Fox, he's done a lot of great work over the last 20 years, and he's had a lot of great roles. But man, this is the first time we've really been given the opportunity to play a really multi-dimensional, deranged, kind of homicidal madman in a lot of ways. <laughs> he's, like, he's funny, but he's also terrifying because he's one of those guys where at any given time is capable of just unleashing total chaos and mayhem so yeah he's just on fire as well and then we have our star i don't even know if i'm saying his name correctly ansel elgort or elgort he's done a lot of tween entertainment like the fault in our stars and divergent or insurgent or whatever the hell that series is called in any case not movies that are being made for my particular deranged sensibilities but as the lead baby he totally carries the movie he holds his own i was really really worried that this kind of doughy faced teenage looking boy would just be utterly destroyed on screen when he's trying to act opposite all these total hardcore badass actors. I mean, it's a murderer's row of great acting talent, but he is totally up to the task. He made me a believer. The soundtrack is really, really good. I wouldn't say the soundtrack was my favorite part of the movie, though. I mean, the soundtrack is an essential part of the plot in that baby, he has tinnitus, and he uses music to drown out the uh, the humming or the, the ringing in his ears, and he also uses it to focus when he's driving. And there's an enormous range of different kinds of music from a lot of different eras, some of which people will love, some of people will hate, depending upon their individual tastes. But chances are, because of the wide variety of tunes, eventually you're going to hear some songs that you like. I think the problem was for me is that a lot of the music in the first third, I didn't give a damn about. And then all of a sudden, I started getting music that I absolutely adored. But the music plays into all this great dialogue. I'm not usually a sucker for romantic exchanges, but when Baby and Deborah are talking about their love of pop songs and different forms of music, there's this great long scene talking about different songs using different names. How if you're a girl named Mary, there are a lot of great pop songs out there using your name, but as Deborah, those opportunities are fewer and farther between for her to enjoy songs about a girl her name but of course baby being named baby he's got the most pop songs of all and so they just have this incredible head over heels romance where they talk about how they just want to spend their lives driving around together listening to all these songs and it just fills you with joy watching their interactions but what really surprised me in this that caught me totally off guard was how intense and aggressive the action is compared to Edgar Wright's other movies Edgar Wright I mean, a movie like Shaun of the Dead, tons of violence, but almost all of it is played for laughs. You're smashing in the head of zombies and cracking up about it and that sort of thing. It just has a very different tone. Or Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, where it's like a mix of like late 80s Nintendo Entertainment System games and Japanese manga kind of clashed together in this almost cartoony video game format where it was really, really cool and really, really exciting and really, really interesting, but never did I feel like, oh no, like so-and-so is about to get kicked in the face because it was all in the realm of fantasy. The action in this is so goddamn hardcore. When people get shot, it is for real, and as the movie progresses, the action gets progressively more intense. The movie remains heavily stylized in the classic Edgar Wright fashion, but it's heavily stylized with a very different emotional tone than what we are accustomed to with his movies and that was the most welcome surprise seeing that he can do a badass action scene with people facing off trying to kill each other where it's not for fun and laughs it's for dramatic impact the dialogue is also razor sharp and on point throughout most i mean there are there is tons of comedy in this at one point when the kevin spacey's character is assembling a gang he's introducing this one character who's an asian he says yeah he put the asian in home invasion and the way he says it is just so goddamn funny because his character, what he likes to do is he likes to assemble different criminals from different backgrounds. He never likes to use the same crew twice. But eventually, we kind of settle on the central crew for this one big job. And just, I, I could have watched 30 more hours of those four characters interacting and traveling around together because it's incredibly adversarial, but it's also very sexual and it's very exciting. And it's just, it's an amazing crew of outlaws. And maybe we haven't seen a crew of outlaws this interesting perhaps since like the usual suspects i mean it's been a while since we've had a good crime movie of this nature i mean i love drive and drive definitely has criminal activity in it but it's a very very serious tone and it's pretty much 
The Ryan Gosling Show when it comes to the crime side. This movie, we have a wide range of colorful characters with all sorts of wild personalities, especially guys like John Bernthal, aka The Punisher, who plays Griff, who's also a killer as well. Man, I just I, I can't say enough about it. Great music, great dialogue, heart and romance to spare, badass action, a really, really satisfying, unpredictable ending. And also, this whole movie, just from start to finish, is wildly unpredictable. And that is hard to do in the world of genre entertainment. I feel like we've seen all the scenarios, we've seen all the formulas, we've seen all the stories. But some of Edgar Wright has put a fresh individual spin on it and has made this traditional format totally his own. So I've got very, very high hopes for Edgar Wright's future. I would love to see him do a giant major film after this. I feel like he has earned that privilege. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World did have a pretty huge budget. I think it was like 70, 75 million. But Edgar Wright's in his 40s now. I think he has proven that he is an incredibly commercial director. Even Scott Pilgrim, which was a huge flop theatrically when it came out, has become a genuine cult classic over the last five, six years. Edgar Wright's era has arrived. It's time for him to double down and really show us what he's capable of. Even though if he were to retire tomorrow, I feel like his filmmaking legacy would be intact because for the last 20 years, basically, he's been delivering some extraordinary entertainment. So if you haven't seen his previous movies or his TV show, Spaced, I strongly urge you to do so. Just start with Spaced and go into Shaun of the Dead and go into Hot Fuzz and uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, The World's End. I mean, you will have an absolute blast. But Baby Driver, man, I really look forward to seeing it a second time. I'm also really interested in seeing if the first third, if I'll essentially reassess it or reappraise it, now that I know what kind of dramatic payoff is going to come in the middle and the end. Because, as I said earlier, I wasn't really invested initially, but then I got massively invested. So, huge high five to Edgar Wright. Kick-ass flick. I strongly urge everyone to go see it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate the support. Please consider giving my channel a subscribe. If you want to talk more, give me a shout on Twitter at Colbrax. And I hope everyone has an amazing week. So long.